This week, a trailer dropped for a film called The Creator. Now, you might have previously heard of this film as True Love. It's the latest movie from director Gareth Edwards and now Oscar-winning director of photography Greg Fraser, as well as Oren Soffer. The trailer looks absolutely amazing, and you should go check it out for yourself. But to me, the thing that Gareth Edwards always accomplishes in his movies is this sense of scale. I'm planning another video about this topic, but it's the way in which long lenses are used to view things from a distance, and it accomplishes this massive sense of scale that wide lenses simply wouldn't in the same way. But I think what's even crazier about this is that when you watch this trailer, this movie feels massive. But the one thing most of us have heard about the movie over the past year or two is that it was filmed on a very familiar camera, and one that is, ironically, not a massive camera. It's a camera that I think this community is particularly interested in, and that camera is, you've probably guessed, the Sony FX3. Now, things change. I'm going off of information that came straight from the mouth of DP Greg Fraser in January of 2022 by way of a podcast. So if this information has changed at some point in the production process, I'll try to pin it in the comments. However, you can hear in this clip from the cinematography podcast from Ben Rock and Ilya Friedman that Greg says he's shooting the entire film on the FX3, citing the small size and the sensitivity of the dual ISOs as a significant draw. You know, the, the Sony FX3, for example, you know, mm. this amazing, amazing yeah. prosumer camera. I'm about to use that on a, on a film I'm shooting in Thailand. It, it's so good. I'm about to, sh <laughs> it's I'm about to shoot the entire film on this camera. <laughs> and it's so ridiculous that it's so small and it can, it's such high ISO for such a small camera. So, you know, whilst that camera may not be appropriate for something else that I'm doing, camera companies should look at that and say, well, if Sony's doing that with an FX3, surely we can do that with, with our camera. Now I've linked the original sources in the description for you to check out in their proper context. And I would encourage you to do so and to support that podcast for breaking this story. Hey, cutting in real quick to share that the morning at which I filmed this video, there were no full technical specs on this film yet on IMDb. Now it's the afternoon, I've already filmed the video and I'm just cutting back to say that the technical specs on the IMDb page do indicate that the camera was the Arri 65 and the Sony Cinema Line FX3 with Atlas Orion lenses. No surprise on the lenses. Um, now to what extent it was the FX3 versus the Arri 65 remains to be seen. All I have is that clip of Greg Fraser saying we are shooting the whole movie on the FX3, but again, that may have changed. I would imagine that the Area 65 was certainly used for many of the bigger VFX heavy shots. And then the negative format is Sony RAW 4.2K, so I'm guessing that they recorded in some flavor of ProRes RAW, which records at 4.2K. Okay, thanks, back to the video. Now, why is this a big deal? Why are we so interested in the camera? And why is this the thing that we as filmmakers often hone in on? Especially since many of us, myself included, are very much in the camp that we should be placing less emphasis on the gear as a means of creating good content or telling meaningful stories. In fact, I agree with many YouTubers who recently have been saying that almost every camera that's come out in the last year or two is fantastic. When I bought the FX3, I probably hit record 300% more than with my a7 III because the look, feel, functionality, color science, and new specs got me excited to create. I loved the image I was creating with it. Now, do I love my FX3 to pieces? Absolutely. Do I think I could get a similar image from the a7 IV, the latest Lumix, Canon, or just about any other recent camera? Absolutely. So why does it matter then? If every camera is great, why is it exciting or noteworthy that Greg Fraser is shooting this film on the FX3? And at a certain level, are we just going to be renting Aries and Venices or hiring DPs with our own kits anyway? I think the number one reason we all find it so exciting is because it's validating. It's a stamp of approval that instantly shows us that if this $4,000 plus dollar camera is good enough for an Oscar winning cinematographer to shoot a big budget science fiction effects epic, then who are we to complain that we just got 24p? It reminds us that story comes first and that the tools are there to service the story, even if it's a cheaper tool. 
There's obviously a reason why Fraser is using this particular tool. And as I mentioned before, he cited the ISO sensitivities. And as you can see in this trailer, the film is very moody and low key in its lighting. There's a stunning shot of a team of operatives emerging from the water at blue hour using what looks like only flashlights and ambient light to light the scene. There's even a full blown battle scene with this look, which really blows my mind. Some of it may be day for night, but still, I have no doubt that scenes like this were a key motivator for using this camera. I also know that director Gareth Edwards highly favors directing with the option to throw a camera on his shoulder and operate himself. And I would imagine the lightweight portability of this camera afforded him far more flexibility as both a camera operator and a director. It's a conjecture at this point, but I can safely assume this was part of the discussion for the creator as well. The wild thing though, is that when you watch the trailer, you're looking for ways to spot whether or not this looks like a prosumer camera that we all know and love. And you simply can't. Obviously, they're using anamorphic lenses, which takes us from that clinical vlogging look and factor in that the film is lit by an Oscar winning DP, not to mention all the costuming, VFX, set dressing, color processing, and overall mise-en-scene that your heart could ever want. And with all that in the frame, you can't tell the difference between cameras. There's even grain on the footage, which makes me wonder if Fraser did his print to film and then rescan the film method that he used on the Batman and Dune to get that grain and gate weave look that he had on those films. All that to say though, it's exciting. The truth is you don't need a movie like this to validate the camera that you own. And it's not really even about the FX3. It could be an A7S3, it could be an A7 III, a Lumix, a Blackmagic, who cares? It's more about an artist using the right tool for the job and showing that more often than not, you already have the tool that is more than capable for the job. And at a lower level, I understand the optics argument as well, or bringing value to yourself as a DP or director by owning a higher end camera. There's a time and a place to look big and professional for clients and to have the workflow that those cameras afford you. But in this instance, I would say that if it's about the image not cutting it, I'd say this movie debunks any debate that you need something more for attaining a good image. And personally, I think that when people say image, that's sort of become a superstitious magical voodoo term for something that's actually backed by specs and data and can be manipulated in a color pipeline. Shoot ProRes RAW or 4444 if you're really that concerned about a professional image. Anyway, Hopefully this validates that the tool you already have is more than capable of telling whatever stories are within you. That's the takeaway for me. Not that I don't have to buy the next camera because I'm sure a day will come when I will, but it's more the inspiration that the sky is the limit in terms of image capture with the tool that I already have. So I can move that priority out of the way when planning my next project. Forget about the camera, if it's a hindrance or an obstacle to getting something made and focus on the story. This is also an inspiration to me because I've just finished the fourth draft of my latest grounded sci-fi feature script, which I'm planning to make hopefully by next winter. And I've already considered the FX3 to be the right tool for the job, mainly for the reasons mentioned previously. Higher sensitivity means less reliance on big movie lights, more flexibility to move and maneuver on a low budget, easier operability on gimbals, and that lightweight footprint that allows for a smaller camera team. Now, would I love a big crew and all the infrastructure that would afford me something like a Sony Venice or an Arri Alexa LF? Absolutely. But unless the floodgates open for financing, that sadly won't be realistic for the film that I'm setting out to make. And there's actually some peace of mind in that, that I don't have to find room in the budget for a camera system because I already have one that's more than adequate. So those are my thoughts. It's exciting times and I'm excited to see this movie. I love Gareth Edwards and his style. And for you filmmakers who are dying to one day make a feature film, but feel like time is passing you by, you're getting a little older. He has a really inspiring origin story. And in his South by Southwest keynote speech from 2016, he sort of tells that story in a compelling way. And I'll, I'll link that below for you to check out. I highly recommend giving it a listen. It's like an annual listen for me. And as for Greg Frazier, I'll always admire his innovative outlook on the world of filmmaking and cinematography. He just sounds like a guy who pushes aside excuses and says, how can we do this better? And whether he knows it or not, I think he's opening a door for lower budget filmmakers like many of us to have an assurance that we will be able to see our projects come to fruition 
regardless of our ability to acquire fancy camera systems. So let me know what you think in the comments. Does this inspire you? And how do you feel about this film being shot on a prosumer camera? Would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you guys next time.